In this video, we're going to play a PlayStation exclusive on the PS5 with an Xbox Elite 2 controller. Then we're going to play a Microsoft exclusive using a PlayStation 5 DualSense. Then we're going to play a 1985 NES or Nintendo Entertainment System with an Xbox One and PS5 controller. Before I even run the intro, let me just explain why these adapters are freaking awesome. They allow you to use over 125 controllers on any platform. So Xbox controllers with PlayStation, PlayStation controllers on a Nintendo Switch, modern consoles, retro consoles, use whatever controller you want. Not to mention there is zero input lag or delay introduced with these adapters. That's critical if you're playing some beat-em-ups or a first-person shooter. Maybe you love PlayStation exclusives, but you prefer the offset sticks and the ergonomic design of the Xbox controller. Maybe you enjoy the value that comes with the Xbox Game Pass subscription, having that massive library of games, but you just prefer a PS4 or 5 controller. Shoot, maybe a Nintendo Switch Pro controller. With these adapters, it doesn't matter. You're not bound by the limitations of controller and console. Hold on, don't start the video without me. Let me slide in here. So Brook has been making adapters for controllers and consoles for years. And I've used their products in the past well before I had a YouTube channel and well before companies sent products for review. Yes, these were sent for review, but this is gonna be an honest, comprehensive review. If there's any cons or shortcomings, you're gonna hear about it. Now, what exactly these adapters do is allow you to use a controller for a completely different platform. For example, an Xbox controller on PlayStation, but not just first party stock OEM factory controllers, but also 125 third-party companies such as Mad Cats, Razer, AIM, Scuff, Battle Beaver, Nacon, just to name a few that I've tested right here on this channel. So for somebody like myself that is somewhat of a controller head, this is great because a lot of times I want to play a specific game but it's only on my Xbox or it's a PlayStation exclusive and recently I've been playing a ton of games on my Switch OLED, two of my favorite ports being Borderlands and Bioshock which are both first-person shooters and the standard Nintendo Pro controller has no rear paddles or buttons, trigger locks or anything of the such but now I can go grab my Microsoft Elite 2 or any of my custom PlayStation controllers off the wall and play that on my Switch. That's pretty awesome. But they also support retro consoles, which I think is super sweet. For example, I have an NES or Nintendo Entertainment System over here, and we are going to play some original Super Mario Brothers with an Xbox controller today. What a day and age we live in. So they sent me a couple of goodies, their adapter for PlayStation, their adapter for Xbox, and their adapter for NES and SNES. I do not currently have a Super Nintendo Entertainment System or SNES. This will also work with European and Japanese versions of those consoles. I'm assuming they're talking about the SNES because the Japanese version of the NES is called the Famicom or Family Computer, but it does advertise on their website that this works with both the US, Europe, and Japanese versions of those consoles. They also sent me a pouch of face masks, very thoughtful, thank you very much, I'll chuck that in my glove box, and slap on one of those bad boys when I walk into a building that still requires masks. And they also sent me a nice little knapsack here, I don't really know what I'm gonna do with it, but uh... It's, it's cool. It's got their logo, a little gecko on there. Maybe I can bring it to the grocery store to be a little bit more eco-friendly and cut down on the plastic bag waste. Speaking like a true Californian, and I live in Florida. I think their branding is a little bit confusing. Let me explain why. This is fine over here. It's lime green and it's titled XB, which stands for Xbox. Their Nintendo Switch adapter is titled the NS and is red. That makes sense. Over here for PlayStation, the adapter is called XE and is pink. I believe it should be blue as that is the theme color of Sony PlayStation and be called the PS, not for piece of, you know what, but PlayStation. It would make more sense. <laughs> <laughs> that gets me excited just looking at her. Oh, man. Also, all of these support immediate response time. They are not introducing any kind of input lag or delay, which is fantastic. That is both in wired and also the controllers that do work wirelessly. So, so many options here, but out of respect for our elders, I think we're going to start with the retro console over here, the NES, which, by the way, I have reviewed on this channel. That video will be linked in the description below. All right, boyos, playing Super Mario Brothers on the NES or Nintendo Entertainment System with the stock NES controller, and it feels fantastic. If it were October 1985 when the console dropped. There's no denying this is not a very comfortable controller. I really do like the dog bone, which is an upgrade that came out later, and also the SNES controller, but the standard NES controller, let me tell you, sister, is no pleasure to play with. I mean, it, it feels like what it looks like. It's a, it's a rectangle in your hand. It's not stopping me from molly whopping these mushrooms, though, I tell you that. This video is probably gonna get a trademark claim for the uh, background music of the game. Nintendo does not mess around with their intellectual property. But let's mess around with their console by getting a modern controller hooked up. This is the Brook adapter for NES and SNES. It does have a QR code here for the firmware, as well as one for a digital user guide. And you do have some stickers back there, which are holographic, like a rare Pokemon card. Nothing in here besides my finger. Hi. Now this plug is for a 
SNES or Super NES, which I do not currently have one in the lineup, but that is joining the retro collection shortly. And this is what we're gonna be using here today, plugging into the front of the NES. I am indeed playing Mario with a Microsoft Elite controller, which is insane. Probably never seen an esports athlete, a true first person shooter sweat lord play Mario with paddles on the back. So right now I'm testing the input lag or delay and simply there is none. As soon as I press that rear paddle, Mario is jumping. And also this was properly key bound or button mapped right out of the box where this is actually pause. This is your select button over here. And these are sure enough A and B as on an NES controller. So here I am with a PlayStation 5 DualSense controller. This is a custom from AIM, so it is a third party controller. But as you can see, it wirelessly works here. I have the paddles working. And even wirelessly, there is zero input lag or delay introduced with this adapter. And also this is properly bound right out of the box with this being pause and this being select, this being A and B. And you can use the D-pad or analog stick to control your character. Switch Pro controllers also connect wirelessly. And according to the manufacturer's instruction manual, the Microsoft Elite 1 and 2 actually used to work until a recent controller update where Microsoft no longer allowed connectivity with these adapters, unfortunately. Now, if you can find the older driver software, I'll have the version on screen right here. This one or older will work with this adapter wirelessly with an Elite 1 or 2 controller. So you can plug this into your PC and downgrade or install an older driver into your controller and most likely this would work wirelessly. Now while this was a simpler time in gaming where there was literally only two buttons and a d-pad and something like a modern controller button wise is a little bit overkill, the ergonomics of a modern controller plus being able to play wirelessly with something that you're used to is great. One thing I do want to make note of that I'm not a huge fan of, when you scan this QR code, it does take you to an entire list of all their products, and you have to swipe, 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 and dig down to the model that you have, which the wingman is near the bottom, as it is alphabetical. So it would be very nice in their future version of the packaging or boxing, not boxing, but the packaging, if they could have the QR code go directly to the instruction manual for this product, instead of their support page for every single product. Now I'm playing Halo Infinite, a Microsoft exclusive with a PlayStation Scuff Reflex DualSense. How cool is that? As you can see, my rear paddles are still mapped and there is virtually no input lag or delay. Now I do have the adapter plugged into the front USB port on the Xbox Series X. It is a rather large USB dongle, so I would recommend using one of the back USB ports because not only is it cosmetically unattractive on the front of your console, but you, a pet, or a child could accidentally hit it and render your Brook adapter, or even worse, your USB plug on your Xbox useless. So be careful with that. Yep, yeah, let's go ahead and shut off our Microsoft console with our PlayStation controller, shall we? Breaking down the barriers of platforms. I like it. Now I'm playing Uncharted, a Sony Interactive Entertainment exclusive or IP intellectual property with an Xbox controller. This is insanely cool. As you can see, I'm not touching my face buttons. No, sir. I'm using the rear paddles, which are indeed bound. And you do still have access to your three onboard profiles. To wirelessly bind or pair the Xbox controller wirelessly to the PlayStation 5, you are gonna pinch on these two blue flashing LED lights. These are indeed buttons, and it will start rapidly flashing. Then you're gonna turn on the Xbox controller, and you are gonna hold down the sync button. This will begin flashing rapidly as well. And after a couple seconds, they will pair up via Bluetooth. So it's not using Xbox wireless, like if you were connecting to an Xbox, it is using Bluetooth. And in order to wake up the controller, you do need to press the Xbox button once again. So in case you think, oh, it didn't work. If this light is solid and these two lights on the Brook adapter are solid, press the Xbox button once again. This is now working as your PlayStation button if I want to return to the home menu. And everything is now PlayStation buttons. Cross, circle, square, triangle. I had some guy in the comment section the other day say, did he say cross for the X button? That's what it's been called all the way back to the PlayStation 1, and PlayStation purists, as well as the Wikipedia page and Sony themselves, will tell you that is indeed a cross button. X is a Microsoft and Nintendo term. As for pairing a PlayStation controller to the Xbox, it's actually even simpler. You're gonna plug in the controller via USB-C or micro USB if you're using a PS4 controller to the USB adapter in the front, and the controller will automatically start working as a wired controller. Then you unplug it, the controller will shut off, you turn the controller back on, and it is now working wirelessly. Unfortunately, you cannot turn on the Xbox console or the PlayStation console with the controller of a different platform because the USB adapter is off. But you can access the menu and turn off the console from your controller from a different brand. Now let's go ahead and remove you and put this lime green USB plug back in to keep dust and debris out of the Rick and Morty Xbox, which is very dusty right now. Just don't look at it. Pretend there's no dust there. 
So I'm currently on the Brook website. The products that we tested here today are the XC for PlayStation, the XB for Xbox, and the Wingman SNES slash NES. They also have the Nintendo Switch adapter, which I will be showcasing in a future video, plus some other super unique products. For example, the Pocket Auto Catcher. If you're still a Pokemon Go player, this wristband will catch Pokemon for you as you walk around, even if you're not playing the game. The Razolution 2, granted it has a hefty price tag, does a very important job. It adapts racing simulator wheels with other platforms. Maybe you have a Thrustmaster or a Logitech that was meant for PlayStation or Xbox. It doesn't matter. Use it on your Switch, why don't you? It, this is it's awesome. I really do like these adapters. Now, a couple features these adapters do support, but I didn't mention because they're not features that I use, would be turbo function. So if you want to be able to hold down a button and have it rapidly press, maybe for a fighting game to bust off a combo or to make a semi-automatic weapon fully automatic by holding down the trigger, these do enable turbo function. They do also have full remapping. Granted, I don't see a need for it because every single controller that I tested here today was automatically configured correctly, where all the keys were exactly what they should be. Granted, it is a little bit disorienting when you're playing a PlayStation game with an Xbox controller because it says press square or press circle and you're like oh ooh, that's not on there but you just press where the button would be and you get what you need. It's all very intuitive and worked exactly like it should. Even on the retro console the NES pause and select were right where they should be. So my final verdict with the Brook adapters I think these are fantastic. Granted these were sent for review but I've used Brook adapters well before I had a YouTube channel and I thought they were cool then and these new versions now that they're wireless and they have easy connectivity and a bunch of other features features, they're better than I remember. The experience of playing a PlayStation game with an Xbox controller or an Xbox game with a PlayStation controller, maybe a Mad Cat's joystick controller on a Switch, maybe an Xbox 360 controller on a SNES, the possibilities are virtually endless. They have adapters for PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, and retro consoles, and each one of those supports over 125 controllers. Some with wireless support, but a lot more with wired support. So if you don't mind being wired, you can use a slew of controllers, like the Razer Wolverine, and the Victrix Gambit. I strongly recommend these adapters. They have features that I wouldn't even use like turbo function and button remapping, but the fact that you are cross compatible with different platforms, different consoles, that's amazing. There are links to all the adapters showcased in this video in the description below, as well as any discount codes available. And drop in the comment section below what game you wanna play with a controller that wasn't meant for it. I was kind of enjoying playing Uncharted with that Elite controller, I ain't gonna lie. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. Check out Into the AM for some of the sickest looking and most comfortable cloth to ever grace my gaming gym. If you don't want to be scorching your corneas with harmful blue light, check out Gamer Advantage, the only blue light glasses on the market that look sexy and actually work. If you're looking for a custom controller that'll blow the competition's tits back, AIM definitively has the best bang for buck or price to performance when it comes to Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch controllers. Nope, they don't do Switch, but they do do gaming mice. I said doo-doo. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. If you need a quick laugh or blast of gamer adrenaline, check my short form videos out at TikTok. To get in touch with myself, and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community Discord, and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number, and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding, starting June, I'm gonna be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven, and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily, all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes, most of the time. Peace.